Warning, this video contains spoilers. Hi. In the last video, I've mentioned that if I'm going to suffer, might as well suffer in HD. But this time, I'll say that my private sessions were better enjoyed in HD. Another new Kiki app, another remastered. And this one's a classic. I read the original and now I'm obliged to talk about its newer version. Now, in case you don't know, which I highly doubt, this VN is something that never happened to you. Or me, for that matter. Or any man ever on this goddamn planet in this day and age. Our protagonist, Yusuke, is a university student who initially didn't have any accommodation to live in, but then he moved into a house belonging to his father's friend. Thing is, this friend it's a widow MILF. Yeah. It gets better. She has four daughters. That's it. I don't think I need to elaborate any further because you know where this leads to. Anyway, let's fight. I mean, get to know these characters. The fucking lucky bastard. The lolly. The Sundere, the Kudere, the Onechan, and finally, best girl, the MILF. The lucky bastard who we should all be envious of. Nonohara Yusuke. Again, there's nothing special about him which just adds salt to our wounds even further. Though I would say that he is a true visual novel MC, like your choices will define his character whether he'll be a good boy or a bad boy. <laughs> if anything else, Yusuke's a normal and healthy young man. Quite helpful as well. For example, helping the lolly with her homework. And this lolly's name is Sagara Ruruka. I do question the fact that she is in a Yuki game because... Yeah! Regardless, Ruruka is the cheerful and cheeky one, which is not surprising given that she's the youngest in her family. A mischievous brat that has a bit of a studying problem, so she asked the MC for some tutoring, and those moments lead to other moments, so okay, yeah, I'm gonna stop it there. On a side note, she knows how to cook. Like, if the MILF is not available, then Ruruka will be the one to cook for the family. And that's very admirable. Another one who's admirable is the Sundere, Sagara Sanae. Despite being a university student herself, she also works part-time. Not for her, but for the family. Quite a responsible character, but she doesn't show it, which reinforces her Sundere personality. It's too bad that she's a Sundere though, since her choice of attire and hairstyle are one of my ideal preferences in a waifu. It is unfortunate because she does do the usual Sundere thing which is punching the protagonist until he's knocked out, and these punching scenes occur several times, but I can't let it slide because some of them were justified and the annoyance was mild at best. Such a wasted personality on this character. And it's nothing personal to all you Sundari lovers. I just hate Sundaris in general. The personality that I don't hate is the Kudere. And speaking of which, we have Sagara Emiru to fulfill that role. Reserved, timid, you name it. Socially awkward with anyone, but there's something to be expected from an introvert, like myself. In addition to that, Emiru likes to cosplay and has a bunch of anime stuff in her room. Though she's afraid to share her passion with others, but once she does, she'll take it to the next level. Not that I can blame her, it's normal to feel passionate when someone has similar hobbies to you. On a side note, these three girls that I just talked about, I just want to say that they make these kind of faces and they're adorable. Now let's move on to the more mature characters. The ones that say, Sagara Arisa, the Onechan material, and the oldest daughter. A very gentle and well-mannered character who helps around the house and works as a nurse at a nearby kindergarten. A job that she loves to do since she loves to play with children. This makes her a motherly figure. And you know what else that contributes to that fact? Her big boy donkers. Hey, don't blame me. Even her siblings say that her boobs are huge. Too bad she's not best girl though. I mean, she could have gotten it, but unfortunately, she didn't win in the size department. Because there is already the MILF that has taken the title of best girl. Plus, the largest bedonkers should always belong to the mummy anyway. That is Sagara Maria. The real mother. The actual mummy. The true best girl. That's all I have to say about her. All I ever need to say. And if you claim anyone else is best girl in this new game, you're fucking wrong and you know it. By the way, there are side characters here. Some have sprites, some don't. 
but all are voiced. And I don't want to talk about them due to spoiler reasons, so go play the damn game if you want to find out more. The main menu page with the music that gave me a nostalgic feeling. Continue button to the load section that has 5 pages with 10 slots each. Options button that leads to a pretty normal settings page. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? I was hoping that the remastered version didn't have this bullshit. I mean, seriously, do VN devs slash readers have problems with voice acting? Moving on, we have the extra button, which has CG recollections, cause of course, scene recollections so you can choose in which scene to shoot your shot, and finally, animated recollections where you'll definitely spend time to release your load. Oh yeah, the music is down here. I wish the OSTs were named though. It's weird for me to give the source of the music in my transitions as track something. Gameplay is in ADV style as usual, and I've only encountered one type of mistake in the English translation if I recall correctly. Not bad, but still, none is better than one. Now I'd like to share the comparisons between the original and the remastered, and from what I've learned, not that much. Only two things actually. One's obviously that you can jerk off in HD now, and the other is the backlog function. This is the remastered, and this is the original. And that's pretty much it for the technical stuff. Playtime next. Eight hours and 49 minutes total for me, while the enemy's average is eight hours and 25. Quite rare that I managed to finish later than the enemy's average, but it's a good thing in this case, since I enjoyed most of Renuki Gear. Though, I do wish it was longer, objectively speaking. I found a bit of annoyance with the structure of the story, which led me to have a relatively longer playtime. Speaking of which. A story structure that I don't like. Why? Because even the first choice prompt will matter in which route you'll get into, and the routes will branch off quite a while later, with a Fui. ton of choices in between. This reminds me of the terrible story structure in Chaos Head Noah. It's a bit weird, so let me explain. Imagine a horizontal line as the main plot, and let's say you chose a girl. Then you'll be taken out of this line in parallel to the story. And then, after some time, rejoin the original line again, encountering other choice prompts, and sometime after that, will you finally branch out into the actual route? It is a complaint, but to be honest, it's not as irritating because this Nukige is shorter. Putting that aside, the VN has a common ending and a harem ending, because duh, obviously. To add to that, every girl has only one good ending and at least one bad ending. However, to call most of them bad endings is a bit of an overstatement actually. I'll explain in the next section. There is not much going on for a story here, which is not surprising given the nature of this VN. Thing is, there is not much to remember the story for either. Like, it's very simple and straightforward. You get into a route, then they flee and they continue flying. It feels like you don't and shouldn't care about the scenes that don't involve the naughty. I mean, sure, there are a few comedic and dramatic moments, but that's just it. The only parts that make me emotionally engaged, aside from the age scenes, are the NTR moments. Yes, there there is NTR here, but they're not even present in all of the bad endings, which may be a good thing or a bad thing depending on who's watching. The bad moments that make up the bad endings are only during some parts of the journey, but they're not at the destination. So if you have some resilience, you'll eventually get rewarded at the end. <laughs> and therefore, they pose no actual threat to your mental state. Plus, some of those NTR moments were like bait not actually happening, so they're pretty mild. What's also mild is the character development accompanied by meh pacing. Even the character interactions are not a big of a deal. Besides that, some endings should have been executed better since they weren't satisfying enough. We're going by my route order, so let's start with the common ending, which is kind of nice actually. Despite not ending up with any girl, Yusuke graduated and stayed on good terms with the Sagara family and he's welcome to return whenever. So that's not bad to be honest. Now on to the actual routes and we have Rurukas. <coughs> oh, sorry, my bad there. My consciousness was telling me to call a lolly route in the Nukige an actual route. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what to say about this route. 
the good ending and the bad ending, they're similar. Like, legit. They arrive to the same conclusion, to the same CG. It's just different dialogues at certain points. And they don't really matter since the end result is still the same. So I'm not fond of this route. That being said, I am fond of that last CG because it indicates a significant character growth for Ruruka, just like Monshiro in Majikoi. Don't ask why I know that though. FBI, open up! I mean, she's a lolly, so she doesn't attract my attention either. Next route is Sanai's and it's kind of a mixed bag. Her good ending is nice, no problems there. But her bad ending is objectively bad despite being subjectively good. Let me explain. Her bad ending is basically doing a threesome with Arisa. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, of course not. Okay, I don't see the downside to that. Though it feels like Arisa had more screen time than Sanae in her own route, which naturally caused her to be jealous. But in the end, the three of them banged, so it's like simultaneously bad and good. I don't know, the game is making me confused. <laughs> After that, Emiru's route. For the most part, both endings play out similarly, it's just that one has love and the other doesn't. You can tell which is which. I also think the bad end is bad because you get a threesome with Ruruka. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the girls, the devs chose the lolly <laughs> for a threesome cosplay <laughs> and Yuri. Now that is subjectively bad, <laughs> despite being objectively fine. Second to last, we have Arisa's route, which is probably the most complicated. According to the guy I followed, she has three bad endings and they're all shared with other routes actually. For example, Two of them are like Sanai's endings and the remaining is Maria's. The two bad endings that lead to the Sanai threesome are like extra H scenes for Arisa. So I would question why they're called bad endings. Maybe because of the NTR present due to blackmail. I don't know. The one ending shared with Maria is also blackmail, but the victim is Maria instead of Arisa. So it feels like the MILF stole the spotlight from her own daughter, which is both objectively and subjectively bad. But hey, at least the good ending was enjoyable, with a nice wrap up too. Lastly, Maria's route. Now I've already talked about the bad ending shared with Arisa. I just want to say that I did feel pissed off at both the UB and the devs. Because one, the UB is an asshole UB. And two, the devs for using NTR to get me in emotionally invested into the story. On the bright side though, the good ending was satisfying enough because you get a threesome with Arisa. Hey, MILF and Onechan. It's a match made in heaven. Well, in this case, it's a three-way match. One of the best routes in his new gear. And one of the longest. But not that you mind, right? What you could mind is coming next. Firstly, get the fucking lolly out of the way. Then Emiru's, Sanae's, Arisa's, and finally, the MILF. Kinda surprising that I suggest Sanae's route to be later than Emiru's, which means that I find the former to be better. I don't know why though, maybe it's cause you get a threesome ending with Arisa, or maybe because her good ending is that good enough to put aside her Sundere personality. Who knows, could be anything. To start with the good stuff, I just want to say thanks to the devs for remastering this classic. Honestly, this art style is nostalgic for me, and to see in HD is just nice. You should also enhance it even further with Magpie, like I did. Much more enjoyable to look at the hot bodies in high resolution. Besides that, the amount of fucking in this new gear is numerous, with most being said by Maria and Arisa, obviously. And if I recall correctly, Sanae and Emiru also said them once. Ara. None from the lolly, which is good, because I don't need a confused boner. After that, I do genuinely like the MC's character more than the usual at some points. Like for example, he does want love in addition to lust. So express him with his heart more than his dick. Wishing that the girls would love him back genuinely instead of just his rod. Admirable too, since he was willing to still be with Maria even after she was blackmailed to undergo the NTR path for the sake of her daughter. And that's true love right there. Lastly, I find it interesting that the choices are a bit of a subversion of expectations. For example, if you are prompted with the option to do her, then you will without a doubt smash her if you choose to. But in the long run, it won't lead you to the good ending. So good endings require you to be a patient gentleman, I guess. Speaking of choices, let's head to the bad stuff. To the devs. When you have so many goddamn choice prompts in this new gear, the least you could do is to add a feature that lets you skip 
to the next option. What you could have also added is to let the voice continue on to the next voice line even after you progress to the next text. I'm also not satisfied with the number of save slots. I mean, 50 is not enough for me. I couldn't even save all the The food. The hell is that? How did that get in there? Moments? Yes, there are that many. And plus, you might want to save some loot scenes that are not part of the scene recollection back in the extras page. I also want to question the editing of some voice lines in certain scenes. For example, the protagonist is in the bathroom. And let's say Arisa is talking to the MC from the outside. But her voice volume is a bit too low. I get that you want to insert a bit of realism here, which hey... <laughs> Having a young, healthy man move into a house full of gorgeous women. <laughs> My ass. Jokes aside, I understand the intention. But as a player of the game, I prefer to hear what she says clearly. I have several more complaints and they involve the main attraction of Nigga Game. Which brings us to... We have good news and bad news here. Good news is that there is a full ton of each scenes. 70 total and that's not including the loot moments that occur outside of cgs the bad news is that a lot of them are relatively short shorter than what i would like them to be like several tens of clicks that's it hey the lolly scenes can be short all they want that's better for me but give me longer scenes for the rest man what the fuck? voice acting is normal here and there are some sound effects going on but nothing major i would also like to share that i had a weird experience of the game trying to load the next text like some kind of sound effects was happening and then the next text appeared like really late after f like five seconds which is strange never happened to me before and unfortunately it happened during a sex scene which turned me off now there is another good news remember i told you guys about the animated recollections yes you get animated age scenes great stuff but sadly the bad news accompanying this fact is that not all of them are animated and I don't understand why. Maybe it's out of budget or something, I can't say, but I won't mask my disappointment. Regardless, I've relieved myself too many times to this new gear, so you have the green light from me. If you wanna listen to me talk more about the fun stuff uncensored, then consider joining my Patreon linked down below. Alright, let's conclude. The Sagara family is a classic. I won't deny that. But I also won't lie that it's not as good as I'd like it to be. Don't get me wrong, it does the fun parts better than the average, and there's a lot of them. But a noticeable number of those age scenes are shorter than the average. You won't really care much about a story as expected from Nikige, but there's also a bit of the comedy, drama, and NTR that do get you invested. It feels like it's in the middle. Not perfectly balanced, but more like half-assed. Even if you're here just for the sex scenes, you would still have to go through a bunch of choice prompts to get them all. Oh, and I forgot to mention that regardless of the routes you choose, you will bang Maria first in the common route. And that means the devs know their audience. And they know that the MILF is best girl. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. Anyway, the DGN score is a 7. Do enjoy your private sessions and take care. Like and subscribe if the content is degenerate enough and later DGNs.